Hello guys. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your server machine as a domain controller. So first of all you're going to want to sign in into your domain machine. So I'm going to put my password in here. Alright. Now I'm connected to my Windows Server machine. And server manager should start automatically as you have it right here. I'll just leave it some time in order for the machine to load fully. You now mine's a little unresponsive, but there you go. You should see the bar. And it's loading. And there. Now you're gonna click on add roles and features. Wizard, right here, and if I, the camera does right now, it's very funny, but there you go, now you can see. So click next, role based or feature based installation of course. Then select your domain controller with the IP address right here you can see. Okay, next. Now you're going to click on active domain services, add features. Do not add any of these features as they will mess up with your ADDS installation later on. So you shouldn't really mess with that for now. Uh, of course you could put DNS server. Uh, and yeah, well, you shouldn't really install that, just install ADDS. Alright, next. Next. For that also. And now you could just uh, click next, next, and then install. And now what it's basically going to do is start the installation for uh, your ADDS, as you can see right there. Now this process shouldn't take really more than 10 minutes, but it also shouldn't take less. For example, my machine right now is 2 gigabytes with an AMD the equivalent of an Intel iCore 3, i3 let's say. So we can just go grab a cup of coffee and uh, come back and I will come back with a video once this is done. Now installation is complete. This took me about three minutes. So now installation is complete. You're going to click on close then you're going to go on restart. So basically you just click here, right click Shut down or sign out and then restart and give it something like operating system recovery plan. Let's say continue. Now your machine should restart itself. Okay, there we go. Just going to move back a little bit. And there it is. The machine just started now. And now we should wait for the server manager to start. There we have it. There we go. 
me adjust the lighting a bit here. There we go. Now, server manager, you should get an error right here after the process completes in the above right here. As you can see, we should get an error. And I'm not talking about these, I'm talking about this one right here. You click on notifications, promote this server with the main controller. There we go. Now, I'm just going to adjust this a bit better here. There we go. Add a domain to existing domain. That will be your first option. Then your uh, second option would be add a new domain to an existing forest and then add a new forest. Now let me explain a bit. Add the domain controller to the existing domain is basically having a domain on your network and adding the controller itself, which what we're doing here. The second option is add a new domain to an existing forest. For example, the forest would be Microsoft.com and the new domain will be support.microsoft.com and now we're going to create a new forest since there is not any name. So now I'm just going to name mine jerk.com or dot something like that. Uh, there we go. And next. Now notice uh, I can name it dirk.com, dot abc, dot anything you want as long as it is not public domain nothing will really happen to it as you can see right here, no, network so if it's not uh, public on the internet or anything like that then you can name it whatever you want however if you're doing this for a company who uh, already has a website you can name it the actual website's name this way it will be easier for the email exchange and things related to the domain now it will say domain controller options and for its functional level, you could say, uh, of course, it's not finished loading. But this is uh, basically the functional level. If you have servers on the forest for 2003, you're going to want to lower this down. As well as domain functional level. If you have domain controllers lower than that, then you could put it. But since this is a test uh, machine or a very closed uh, home network, we, where we can just say server 2012 R2. Since all the machines will be 2012 R2. Now you're going to put a password for the administrator of the domain, which will be very simple for me right now. Oh. That. There we go. Click on next. The legation for the DNS server cannot be created. That we don't have to worry about that. NetBIOS name right now should fill in automatically, like basically your domain name but without the dot local or dot com. We're going to wait for this little bar to load. There we go, dark. Now you should better like leave this as it is, although you could change it, which I don't recommend. Now click on next. That's now basically the paths is for uh, if this was the machine, the highest machine on your uh, enterprise, you would have uh, many domains and many uh, machines basically where you could store your stuff so database folder you could uh, browse this one NAS network attached to a storage device or you could leave it as it is the log files itself also you could uh, put it on another partition on a network uh, attached storage or another machine so I'm going to leave it like this and click next now you're going to review your options and other prerequisites checked now this should work just fine unless you install other things like the domain certificates which it shouldn't work you should uh, configure DNS and DHCP first however in our case it should work just fine 
There we go, we're now after the prerequisites checked, which should take about one minute maximum. So all the checks passed successfully. Click install to begin installation. Now, you are going to get some uh, errors, like these ones. However, you can just close your eyes and put the mouse over install and say install. And now the process will actually start. Now this should take some time, which again, if you're a professional IT guy, you probably may want to take a cup of coffee or your break or anything that will uh, do entertainment because this should take a long time. Now please note, after the installation, it's going to ask you to restart and then you can click restart and uh, after that we will uh, go over how to set up a computer to a domain. So I'll be back. Okay, so there we have it. This is the result of the installation. So you will be restarted, shutting down Windows modules and everything. So now I'll do that. This will restart. Now please note, after the installation, setting up your whole uh, server should take a bit more time, which is uh, totally normal. There we go, put my backlight. I'm going to say please wait, everything like that. And now something very important you need to note after the installation of the ADDS, is that when you log on, you must log on on the actual server, on the domain. Now, there's no actual no difference between the account passwords and the accounts on local server 2012 and the actual domain. It's on it. However, in order to be able to manage the domain, you need to log in on the domain controller, domain administrator account, which is basically the same. This should take some time, so I'll be back. Okay, so now my domain controller just finished restarting. I'm going to log on, and now be sure of this. That you log on as your domain name, Dark, and Administrator. Now, I don't think you really have a choice right now. But, when you do log in, oh, like this, be sure you write the domain name on capitals Dark, backslash and administrator and if you're on lower versions of Windows Server then whatever your account name is now your password for your local account should work just fine now Now that has been restarted and we're going to check a bit server management to create an account and some uh, other extra features. Now this is the domain controller right now. All right. Okay, so under tips right here, what it says it's remove unused server role and features to so have saved, saved this space. Find applications for Windows Server and learn how you can benefit from providing feedback to Windows Server. Now this has finished its installation. So now what you're going to do is that you're going to open Windows PowerShell 
just like this and uh, okay I'm just going to put this like here you're going to write a d d s and it oh actually no it's d s a dot m s c there we go now the execution is complete and now you will see your domain open it up users and create a new user now I'm going to call this garage which garage now uh, for an empty reasons I'm actually going to hide this for the first name and everything so I'm going to be back with it now right here you're going to see the password which I'm going to put an easy password however it has to be capital with numbers on it and special characters so I'm going to say user must change password as logon and then I'm going to say next which I have to hide of course now, now in order to make a new uh, computer be able to join it is not mandatory that you do this step however what I like to do just to be sure is right right click new computer and the computer name should be like uh, something like this and user group we're going to change it to uh, users something like that uh, both in users but I'm gonna change it back to default just uh, like that so new computer Uh, like so, nice PC. So default. Then okay. And now the computer is actually on there. Now that everything is in order, I'm going to be back with the actual computer for this. So I'm going to move this aside, and now you have a Windows 7 client. Are you going to want to log in as your uh, the default administrator account? There we go, so now I'm going to log in as my user. Now one very important discovery that I want to, you to make. On your server machine, what is going to say here, it should say under connections dark.gov, which it does not really say right now, but it will say sometime. So I'm just going to manage a bit my uh, PC name, computer, system properties, just like that so you can see better, change settings, and there we go. Under server, you should see dark.gov, dark, .gov, dark uh, everything like that. Now, a domain controller cannot be moved from one domain to the other, so you're going to have to keep that in mind. Now, when you're going to want to set a computer to your uh, actual server, you're going to want to go to Wi-Fi settings and connect to the same Wi-Fi or to the same network connection. Now, I'm just going to put server right here. Now, I should be connected about right here. Go to properties. Actually, no, don't go to properties. Go to open networks and sharing center you're going to change the adapter settings do not see why this does not work but oh there we go it works perfectly just like that now just for uh, measures I'm just going to show you how the actual uh, router page looks like to be uh, sure so 172.16.16. Dot, I believe it's 19 not sure. Get open CMD just in case. Oh, there we go. So domain DHCP says right here. So I'm go the username is admin. Now your default password should be admin as well. Now this is not necessary step. But this is just to actually show you. How it actually looks like so no this is the IP address of the router this is your default gateway so 
when you're going to want to set your adapter settings under control panel network connections right here you're going to want to go to a local area connection and you're going to want to give it a right click now note you have to be an administrator to execute this command so there we go properties It's a very slow computer, so I have to wait. There we go. Go to the Internet Protocol version uh, 4, which is TCP IPv4. You're going to go out to Properties. You're going to use, to use the following the DNS server address. Good. Now, what you're going to do to make sure that actually works is put your actual router, your actual server, sorry, for uh, your uh, IP address. So I'm on PowerShell on my server and I'm going to write ipconfig. Now this is my IP address, IPv4 address right here. I don't know if I can mark. Yes, I can. So this right here, 172.16.16.14 is the IP address of my server. You're going to, it's very important that you do this because sometimes joining a domain will not help. So I'm just going to say 172.16.16. .16. Oh, that's 16. Dot 16. Dot 14. 14. There we go. As you can see, under use the following this DNS server automatically and say OK right here and say close now, now what you're going to do is go to a uh, start menu well, go to computer right click on it and say properties I'm going to be waiting for this a bit more than I should. Alright. Here we are now in system properties. However, just before you do this step, I forgot to tell you guys, uh, go to start R, which is run, and you're going to write control user passwords to just like that user passwords to hit enter this will run the command as an administrator and you need to do some modifications to your computer all right now please note if you want to join a computer to a domain it has to be windows 7 professional or ultimate you cannot under any circumstances join a Windows basic or premium to a domain now right here you're going to do this you can see a little dialog which you'll be able to do right here you are going to check users must enter a username and a password to use this computer you need to go to advanced and require users to press control all delete now your computer should do this automatically for you when you're joining a domain now this is like that. I'm going to click on change settings right here under computer name and full computer description. Change settings. Just going to clear up some dialogs. And there you go. Now this is your computer name, your computer description under uh, remark. You're going to change the workgroup settings, which is the second button. Then you're going to go to domain. And you're going to write the name of your domain, which is dark. What we have right here. Domain. 
Now, if you did this right, it should take some time. Just as it's doing right now. And right now, it says the ADDS cannot be contacted. Alright, so we're going to do this one more step as we did it last time. Open network and sharing center. Hmm. Also, I'm going to make sure that my domain controller is up and running. So, I'm going to say DS, the egg. <coughs> You see the egg, there we go. And now, this passed all the tests under ADDS. Is it up and running? Yes, it is. We must just make sure that the server is actually up and running. Connected the network, all right. Maybe we restart, but anyways. We're just going to make sure that this is connected to uh, the server. So change it up your settings again. Uh, properties. Just like the way we did before. DHCP4. Use 16.16.14. Alright. Click OK. Under wireless, because don't forget we're actually joining it via wireless, so we're going to have it via wireless too as well. Now, please notice when you can see this dialog, you can change the settings for the default gateway, subnet mask, and IP address of your computer. However, if you do change the default gateway, whenever you're going to log in on another network, you should change it from whatever it's at. So. Right now we're going DNS however should not affect 172.16 tab 16.16.14 this should work now. Okay, and then close. Now it should work. Alright, what is this? Change settings. All right, hmm. there we go. Now it worked. Now what you're going to do is say the default domain controller, domain administrator, username and password, which should be in our case administrator. Password, the password of your domain controller. Now please note, whatever you do on the account of the administrator will automatically migrate to the account of the domain controller. So, you may not want to give the account of the administrator to anybody from this domain. And now... Mm, yeah, the, we uh, failed the username and password, so... Add... Okay, there we go. So our, our uh, eye on our keyboard got some problems. Now tapping on the keyboards should actually uh, improve better the harder you type. You know about that. However, what we know is that we are communicating from our machine and there we go. Welcome to dark don't dot com domain now please note we're not offending anybody by using this domain name since it is not public now you must restart your computer to apply these changes so we're just going to click ok close and so later restore now does not make a difference so click, click restore now now under here it should say dark Connection to. And now, we will do this when you for programs to close. Now I'm going to be verifying my domain controller for a bit and I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. Now, for anybody who's wondering what my specs are for the domain controller, here they are. Right here. So now, we are going to be 
setting up the domain on our Windows 7 machine. There we go. Press Control Alt Delete to log on. I'm going to press it. Switch user, other user. And now you're by default logging in on the dark. If you want to log on locally, then just go ahead and type your computer's name, which is this one in our case, backslash, and the administrator account, in which our I has problems. And there we go. It's incorrect. But anyways, we're now going to log in on dark. And the username is garage. And the password is simple, of course. Alright, there's no logon servers to the request. Hmm. This is weird. And I'm going to be back. Perfect. Perfect. Let's change the password. So now I'm just going to change it back as it actually was because I'm not going to set a complicated password for the purpose of this video. There we go. Right. Look at that password the provided is not meet the length, complexity, or history of the domain. So whatever. I'll have to make a new password. Changing the password. And your password has been changed. And now welcome to the domain. Preparing your desktop. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I guess. I'm going to be showing you something on it, however. So... Uh Oh, there we go. On your domain controller, this is what your connection should look like. If it does not say your domain name dot your domain suffix, then probably you should give it a restart because your computers should not connect to it. This is why the error happened before. There we go. And now you got your computer connected to your domain. Alright, so I think I got the power issue. And there we go. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.